Hey guys, Harley Brief Dan here with a video to show you how to make a custom color chooser for your in-game uh, projects or for your projects in Unity. And basically, this is an in-game color chooser. It will work in-game, meaning if you want to allow the player to choose the color of a certain game object or a certain UI element, you can let them do this. The way we're doing this is we have one texture or one uh, one material, and all we're doing is changing the offsets of the texture or material and applying that either either to the game object or applying the pixel value of that certain offset to a uh, UI image. Uh, basically, I will provide links for this entire project and all the all the scripts and stuff in the uh, description below. I'll have links for the two pictures or the two color palettes that we'll be using. I'm going to try to do go over this fairly quickly, so uh, try to follow along as best you can. Uh, at the end of it, I'll talk about how you can add things to this or really use it for other projects besides colors. Um, this really doesn't apply to our Make an RPG series uh, specifically, but this can be used for our Make an RPG series or for whatever RPG that you're working on, this can be used. Uh, maybe you have some sort of symbol that you want to allow the player to color. Uh, you can do, use the same idea to color uh, the symbol. Maybe you have a whole bunch of faces and you want to allow the, the player to choose a specific texture for their face. Um, you can use the same idea that we're going to be using for this sphere and instead of colors you'll just have a texture full of faces and then you just set the offset for that specific face. Um, so what I'll do now is show you how this all works in the game here and then we'll go over the scripts and show you how to import everything and I'll try to get this out for you guys and have all the code commented pretty, fairly well so that you can kind of follow along. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down the, in, the, in the comments below. I'll try to answer them or maybe someone else can answer them. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So here is our game scene. I have a, a preview image up here. This is a generic Unity UI image. I have four buttons below it, two buttons to increment through the list of colors. I have a button to apply whatever preview color uh, is here to this image over here. I have a apply to game object which will apply the color that's in this preview window to this sphere that is here. Uh, this is just a generic UI image as well. I've made it a little bit bigger so you can see the color. This is a basic sphere from Unity and I've applied a normal map to it just to make it look a little prettier. We're using the standard Unity shader we will create a new material for this and I'll show you how to do that as well. But let me go ahead and press play and show you how it works. So here we are, sphere is moving up and down and slowly rotating. Uh, I can apply this orange color to the image here. I can change it to a blue and apply it to the game object. Say I want the game object to be red but I want this to be, the image to be black. I can do that. So uh, it's detecting individual colors and it's, you know, it's applying whatever color I chose to the correct game object at the right time. It's pretty fast and it saves on a whole bunch of batch calls, and uh, which is super m important for mobile development. Basically, mobile development you don't want to have a whole bunch of materials, and this is a way to cut down on the on the number of materials. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go through how to set up this scene and how to set up the colors and stuff that you need. So the first thing I'll talk about is the color palette. This is a texture that I've uh, imported into Unity. This is just a PNG file I created. It's a 5, 512 by 512 image, so 5, uh, 512 pixels by, by 512 pixels. Each box of color here is 128 by 128. You can have as many boxes as you want. The texture can be as large as you want. The texture can be as small as you want. You can have four colors. You can have one. It's all up to you. Uh, but I've chosen 4x4, four four, so I have 16 total colors. These colors are chosen at random. As you can see, I have two colors that are very similar here. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just for testing purposes. Uh, but basically, I have four colors by four colors. Uh, if you want these to be, let's say you're applying these as faces like I was just talking about for a uh, for like an RPG, uh, you could make each one of these, let's say, 512 by 512 and you can just increase the total texture size. But this one block would be a face. This block would be a face. This block would be a face. And all you're going to tell Unity is say, hey, use this material, which is this whole image, but offset it so where I'm only grabbing this one little box, which will apply the face. Uh, and that's basically what we're doing. I'll talk more about that now. So once you have that material created, again, this will be in the description below for you to download, or if you want to create your own, go ahead and do that. I have two in the game files here. I have that one, and I have this one. 
a little bit more uh, control of what colors are available, um, but that's just for you to look at. Once you have that done, uh, you want it when you import them into Unity, and you'll see in the project. Uh, if you download the project file, you need to import them and change the texture type to advanced. So by default, if you're in a 3D project, it will import it as a texture. You want to go to advanced and set it to read, write, enabled. So click that and then hit apply. Uh, if you're in a 2D project, it will uh, it'll default as a sprite, but you want to change it back to a texture or ch change it to advanced and do the same thing. Uh, so do that with both color palettes or whatever color palettes you bring in. If you're going to use a normal map like I have, I just set normal map. Uh, texture type to a normal map and click apply. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Again, I just did that for aesthetics. I think it makes the cube look a little bit better. Um, it's not important. The next thing you're going to need to do is create a material. I've gone up here to create and select a material. It's a basic Unity uh, shader. Nothing changed. Uh, this is the generic 5.0 shader. Uh, I've applied our, one of the color palettes to the albino map. The albino map is set to white with a 255 alpha channel. Uh, very basic stuff here. The the metallic is set to zero. The smoothness is set to one. This is just for aesthetics. Uh, I applied the normal map to the secondary map, and that's because the tiling is a little different, and I wanted the tiling to be higher. The reason why the tiling is set to 0.25 is because I have four rows, right? I have four columns, four rows. Here we have four blocks of information, uh, and Unity goes zero to one uh, for a texture, right? So this bottom left hand corner is zero. This bottom right hand corner is one. And I want, uh, we have four textures we need in here, so one tile will be this one little block. So we go 0 to 0 0.25, 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, 0.5 to 0.75, and then 0.75 to 1. Uh, and that will gather, these be our coordinates to gather that texture. Uh, once you've done that, you've set that material up. I've labeled it color palette. You can label it whatever you want. Maybe if again, let's going back to that same faces. Uh, the facial uh, material, you can label it face material if you want. It's really up to you. The The name doesn't matter. Uh, but once you've done that, let's go ahead and create a C-sharp script. I've created two. One called Go Spin, which is game object spin. I'll, I'll talk about that. That just spins my game object and makes it uh, ping pong up and down. Uh, and then I have a color picker, which is the the main class of this of this video. Uh, you can entitle it whatever you want. I called it color picker because I'm choosing a color. Uh, it inherits from mono behavior so I can attach it to a game object. Uh, here I have a public texture 2D which is the color palette. I take in uh, four other private or public variables here, three others, excuse me, which is a number of, of rows, number of columns. For me that's 4 by 4 and then texture size is a 512. So I have a 512 by 512 texture. That's what I put there. Uh, I've created a private array of uh, color 32 which is a Unity Engine uh, type uh, and uh, color 32 allows me to assign the RGB value specifically between 0 and 225 so I've done that or that's what that array is array of color 32 I've called it all colors this is where we're gonna store all the colors from our texture the next thing we have is total number of colors which is just num rows times number of columns so 4 times 4 is 16 I have 16 total colors I have a private color uh, 32 which is the selected color uh, I also have a public Unity UI image variable. This is, allows me to set the pre. This is the preview image, the selected color image. That's just a preview image to show you what color we're currently selected on. I have a private variable integer called count. This is to uh, allow me to keep the cache the index value that we're on for the color, so we can basically uh, increment through the list of color or the array of colors later on. I also have a vector2 array. Uh, this is for color offsets. This is used for meshes. So if you're doing the facial thing or uh, using the sphere here, we're actually just offsetting the colors or we're offsetting uh, what we're pointing to. So by default, the tiling is set to 1 to 1. If I set the tiling 1 to 1, Unity is going to sample this entire thing and apply all these colors to my image. Again, I only want part of it. I only want this one cube. So we need to set the tiling to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, uh, and these are the offsets that we're, we're that we're t that we're going to be saving in that vector two array. So if I want this this uh, pink image here uh, to be applied, I need the offset specifically for this, which is uh, going to be 0 0.25 in on the you know the bottom 0 0.25 in on both on the y and uh, x very. Uh, X and Y so that we can get this pink image. That's all that means. 
So let me go back in the script here. So we have that private variable. Uh, I got rid of the start and update functions. We're just going to be using void on enable. So when we enable this UI component, uh, we're going to check to see if all colors is null. Meaning if we've already loaded the colors off the texture, then we don't need to do it again. But if we haven't, if it's set equal to null, then we need to go ahead and create the colors array, which is a method we'll talk about in just a moment. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe it'll be easier for you guys to see as well. But again, this is a statement to check to see if it's null or not. If it's null, uh, then we'll create an array. If it's not, then we won't do it. Uh, we'll set the selected color image to the very first color in the color array. Uh, and then here are the two methods that do all the work. So we have one method uh, that samples the palette texture. Uh, basically, if you have a, again, if it's faces, it will sample that that texture for all the faces. And what it's doing, this what this is doing, is we're actually get we're grabbing the pixel value of the color. So we're looking at we're creating a new color called color. It's color 32. It's called and we're calling it color. We're looking at our color's palette, our color's palette, which is the texture. And then we're passing in two integers uh, to get pixel, and we're looking for at a specific pixel, and we're getting its RGB values and storing it in color, and then we store it in the all colors array. Um, so we'll look at that in just a moment, but let's go down to create colors array because this is what we're this is how we actually create the array. The first thing we do is calculate the total number of colors, which is again just number of rows times number of columns. Uh, we create a new colors array, all colors array, and setting it equal to the total number of colors, so 16 in my case. We're creating a new color offsets vector 2 array, again the same way as we did the all colors with the total number of colors, uh, so 16 here. And then we create a private method variable here called total count. This keeps track of what uh, the total count should be eventually equal to uh, 16 at the end. Uh, and we have two for loops, the X and Y that uh, basically go through the rows and columns of our texture and apply the, um, or get the color and then get the offsets. So uh, after you create your two for loops, you'll have the all colors array, uh, and then the index value will be your total count, so initially it be zero for the first time it iterates through the for loops. And then we're going to set that equal to the sample palette texture method above here, and we're going to pass in uh, a couple some information. Basically, we're going to be passing in two float values, an x offset and a y offset. And these are just basically to divide the number of uh, whatever whatever number we're on in our uh, for loop divided by uh, the number of rows. So um, we're passing in one divided by four. On the on, so in the first iteration it'll be zero plus one, so it'll be one divided by four would be 0.25, would be the first offset that we're going to look at in our color, get pixels. So we're looking at 0.25 times 512, which would be 128, right? So we're looking at the 128th pixel on the x and the 128th pixel on the y, uh, and I actually subtract five pixels here just to make sure that we're actually on the color, but this is not necessary. So what we're doing is we're passing in 128 to 128. So if I go into Unity here and open up that picture, it's going to find the 128 by 128 pixel value and it's going to assign the color. It's going to grab it and uh, assign it. So actually we're on this one. So it's going to look at 128. It's going to go here. Okay, this is where 128 is here. It's going to subtract 5. It's going to look at 128 on the Y will be here and some subtract five so we're actually going to capture the color right here we're just getting this pixel value for this color uh, and storing it in the all colors array once we do that we're going to do this, almost the same thing with color offsets but we're not going to be adding the one to it we're going to get a float x and divide by the number of rows so we get that 0.25 the 0.25 and we'll store it for the color uh, offsets at the same index value so that means when I come back in my colors here let me open up the right one so we're working with the orange, right? We just captured the orange color at the 128 and 128, but we want to store this offset of 0.25 and 0.25 so that we know that this is our quadrant that we want to apply to the mesh. So that's all we're doing. We're going up 0.25 to this point and up 0.25 to this point, and we're, we're saving these numbers uh, in a, at a vector 2 in the array so that we can apply them to our mesh later on. So once you've done that, written that up, hopefully you understand that. If not, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll try to explain a little bit better. Uh, and then we increment our total count. So we'll do this 16 times because we have 
four rows and four columns and four times four is 16. I had three more methods and these are just for the UI. Uh, basically change color, this just uh, monitors uh, which which color we're on in, in our list or the array of colors and then we apply that color to our preview window. Uh, and this is called, the increment and decrement buttons call this uh, this public method. I have two other public methods, apply color to sprite, meaning this applies the selected color to the sprite color. So you just pass in the sprite and we get its color and we set it equal to whatever the preview window is. Uh, and then apply color to the game object, same thing, takes in a game object, we get its mesh renderer component using get component. We get its material, which is the first material in its list of materials. We get its main texture offset, which is a vector 2, and we set it equal to the uh, color offsets index. The color offsets uh, array, and we pass in the index value of count, which is the same index value of the preview color. Uh, so hopefully you understand that, and I'll make sure to comment this up and provide it in the description for you guys to download below. Uh, here's the go spin class. This is just spins our game object. In the update method here, I have a this.transform.rotate vector3 up. Uh, so I'm telling it to rotate on the up axis of vector3, and I'm telling it to rotate at 0.15 units. Uh, 0.15 f, that's the float speed of what I want it to rotate at. Uh, and then the ping pong here, uh, it's a tran you just get it, you set the game object transform equal to a new vector three. I want it to stay in the same x position and z position. I just want it to go up and down. So I use a math dot f dot ping pong, which is basically a sine wave, and I'm telling it to do uh, the time dot time divided by two uh, is the time I think is the time to complete a frame divided by two. So it's just going to go up and down, kind of slow, uh, and it goes between 0.5 and 0 0.5 is what it will go between. It's basically a sine wave that goes, it just follows a sine wave up and down on the y-axis. So hopefully you understand all that. Let's go into Unity and I'll show you again how it all works. Um, again, I'll provide all this down in the, co in the description below for you guys to download. It's all for free. Don't worry about it. Uh, but if you use it, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and let people know you got it from uh, my channel. Uh, but here it is again in action, slowly rotating, moving up and down, and you can apply whatever colors you want to the game object and image. Pretty simple, uh, and it gets the job done. So again, if you guys got any comments, write them down in the comments below. Uh, hope you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something, and I'll talk to you guys next time.